Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today, and we're back with some latest SpaceX updates. We'll start with the initiation of a test of Mechazilla carriage and arms, then we'll talk about Raptor 2 progress and wrap up with Starlink updates in India. So let's start with the latest test activities with the robotic arms of Starship Launch Tower at Starbase. Recently, SpaceX has kicked off the aspiring range of tests with the two robotic chopsticks of Starship Launch Tower at the orbital launch site, which has been designed and built to lift, stack, and catch Starships and Super Heavy boosters. First move for any test of the catching mechanism by SpaceX teams was carried out nearly two months after its installation on the launch tower. SpaceX had installed the first Mechazilla arm in August 2021, then the installation of the larger arms was carried out in October 2021, and now they've headed for the test campaign. As per reports, on the 3rd of January 2022, they moved the carriage and robotic arms for the first time ever. In the earlier few days, they're busy removing many structures which were used earlier during assembly work to support the catching mechanism. The range of movement was minimal. According to sources, SpaceX teams used the industrial drawwork system to lift the entire arm and carriage assembly for a few meters up and down by the launch tower. This test was carried out to ensure the workability of the Mechazilla carriage. They moved for the second larger test attempt on Mechazilla on the 5th of January 2022. This time the carriage was lifted about 15 meters up the tower. Moreover, the arms of the Mechazilla system were opened up wide for the first time. Sources state that the hydraulic actuators on each of the catch arms were triggered to make the arms move. In the beginning of the test, the sideward movement of the arms was done at a slow pace. It's expected that during the slow sideward movement, the engineers were calibrating the arms during the first slow move to determine their full range of motion and associate those positions with certain sensor readings or telemetry. This calibration process will help in ensuring the safe movement of arms during much larger tests or missions. In comparison to any arms ever built and used by different rocket launch facilities, the catch arms of the Starship launch tower proves to be the largest ones. Mechazilla catch arms have a length of about 30 meters with a height of 5 to 10 meters. As we know, these arms were made out of heavy-duty steel pipes and fastened to an even stronger set of claw-like support attached to the launch tower. Another chief feature of tower arms was the presence of industrial-grade drawworks machinery and also a complex system of cables which controls the movement of arms. These arms also feature huge hydraulic actuators which help the arms to open and close. With the help of these actuators and arms, SpaceX will have an alternative to cranes, which will be available in every weather condition for lifting, manipulating, and stacking Starships and Super Heavy boosters at the launch pad with precision. This primary powered movement of the robotic arms and carriage is presently a major milestone for both the Mechazilla catch arms and, of course, SpaceX engineers. This achievement by SpaceX also certifies that further such extensive tests and simulations will come up in the orbital launch tower. It's expected that later SpaceX may move on for another fit test of Starship S-20 and Super Heavy Booster B-4 by stacking them and using the robotic arms. Moreover, it's also estimated that they will simulate catching of falling rockets, Super Heavy and Ship 2. Now, our next update will be based on Raptor 2 engine progress shared by Elon Musk. Just as other works on Starship, Super Heavy, and Orbital Launch Site are going on at a good pace, Raptor 2 engines are also progressing at almost the same rate. Musk had recently shared an update on Raptor 2 progress on his Twitter page. Musk wrote, Raptor 2 now operates routinely at 300 bar main chamber pressure. This update really provides us with good news about how much SpaceX-designed Raptors have developed over time. 
Earlier in October 2021, Musk had live tweeted one of the first Raptor 2 static fires. That update from Musk had revealed that, at the time, the engine reached a chamber pressure of 321 bars and briefly produced around 245 tons of thrust before it was destroyed. Thus, we can clearly see how much SpaceX have developed their Raptor 2 engines over a few months so that it can sustain 300 bar chamber pressure for regular and longer durations. This rapid progress SpaceX has made in the first few months of Raptor 2 testing is extremely encouraging. Still, it is likely that one or several months of work have remained before SpaceX can begin qualifying the first Raptor 2 engines for the first Starship or Super Heavy prototypes designed for the new engine. Almost three years back, SpaceX had started testing of their first full-scale Raptor engine they would ever built. And by that time, the engine had reached a main combustion chamber pressure of just 269 bars for a short period of time. Yet, it had broken the records of Russia's RD-270 and RD-180 engines. And as we can see, SpaceX nearly crossed a time period of one and a half year to ultimately clear at least one Raptor prototype on higher chamber pressures over a minute or more and reach 330 bars chamber pressure. It also produced 225 tons of thrust. Musk stated that all Raptor ground testing at the company's McGregor, Texas development campus is now focused on the new hardware components of Raptor, which will make Raptor look much more clear in matter of plumbing and wiring. The big throw of Raptor 2 is that there will be almost 25% increase in maximum nominal thrust than Raptor version 1 or 1.5. Report says that Raptor 2 will have a little wider throat for its nozzle, which will enhance the power density. Moreover, after more developments with time, Raptor 2 will provide more reliable operation at chamber pressures of up to 300 bar, which is about 10% higher than Raptor 1.5. In our last update, we'll talk about the resignation of Starlink's head of India after SpaceX issued refunds for pre-orders. Recently, SpaceX's Starlink head of India, Sanjay Bhargava, has stepped down from the post. This had happened almost a month after the Indian government had issued an order to SpaceX to stop taking Starlink pre-orders from the people till they get the regulatory approval for providing satellite broadband service in the country. Bargava wrote in a post on the 4th of January 2022, I have stepped down as country director and chairman of the board of Starlink India for personal reasons. My last working day was December 31, 2021. I will have no comments for individuals and media, so please respect my privacy." Sanjay Bhargava had started to work as Starlink Head of India from the 1st of October 2021. After he would taken up the role, he would stated that SpaceX's Starlink pre-orders in India had surpassed the mark of getting 5,000 pre-orders. He also projected that by the end of 2022, SpaceX will have almost 200,000 active Starlink terminals in India. Bargava earlier had said, We hope to have applied for a commercial license on or before the 31st of January 2022, unless we hit some major roadblock. But on the 26th of November 2021, they faced hurdles when India's Ministry of Communications ordered SpaceX to refrain from booking and rendering Starlink services with immediate effect, because SpaceX did not have any license to operate in the country. Though after that order, SpaceX still continued to accept $99 pre-order deposits from India through Starlink's website for some time. But recently, they have stopped taking pre-orders. SpaceX Starlink website now says, Starlink is not yet available in your area due to pending regulatory approval. As we receive approvals, our coverage area will continue to expand, so please check back for future availability in your area. SpaceX stated that, Unfortunately, the timeline for receiving licenses to operate is currently unknown, and there are several issues that must be resolved with the licensing framework to allow us to operate Starlink in India. According to some reports, just a few hours after the resignation of Bargava from the post of Starlink head in India, SpaceX had emailed their customers in India. Those emails state that the pre-order deposits of Indian customers would be refunded until Starlink is licensed to operate in the country. The email states, as has always been the case, you can receive a refund at any time. The Starlink team is looking forward to making Starlink available in India as soon as possible.
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.